canal is dried and is coated with sealer with a paper point. It's critical that you blot any surplus sealer with successive paper points until the paper point comes out spotted rather than coated with sealer. If there's too much sealer in the canal, there will be a big bolus extruded at the end of the procedure. The needle is placed in the canal and held for five seconds before activation. We're going to push the back end of the toggle so we have a slower extrusion rate. It will push the gutta percha apically and then start moving the needle out of the canal if you hold a light apical pressure on that needle. When it's backed up to the orifice level, the needle is removed. Sometimes I use a little circumferential motion. I will gather the surplus gutta percha and the hand plugger comes in to condense the gutta percha until it's solidified at the orifice level. Very simple technique, very rapid. There's a little more challenge controlling the apical surplus with this technique, however. It's not quite as three-dimensional in the mid-root and cervical regions. This is one of the most rapid three-dimensional filling techniques available to clinicians. The challenges of it, and they can be worked around with experience, are controlling the apical surplus. In a vital case, not a big deal because you have intact bone at the end of the root canal. In necrotic cases with a lesion, if you don't know how to do this technique correctly, you can have a lot of surplus. Also, uh, surplus can be caused by forgetting to blot the surplus sealer because this will literally squeegee any pool of sealer at the end of the root canal right out the end of the root. So blotting surplus sealer with paper points, learning how to create the right amount of apical pressure to get the gutta percha to go to the end of the root canal, but then bump the needle back to start the backfilling again as a matter of technique and experience. Certainly practicing this in extracted teeth is going to go a long way to getting those kinds of concepts down.